I like to occasionally make videos that don't necessarily fit within this fitness tech niche, but I believe are very, very important. One thing I promise to do on this channel is to always challenge my thoughts and the way of thinking and focus not only on physical fitness, but also mental health and education. Podcasts have provided such an incredible exposure to free education from the most brilliant minds of our time. And at the top of that list of podcasts is Joe Rogan Experience, getting an estimated 11 million listeners per episode. And why is that? It's not because Joe is peddling out bullshit, but because he's developed an incredible platform for high level academics, business personalities, comedians, high level athletes, and just an endless amount of other professionals of all sex, races, countries, and exposes so many people to an infinite amount of viewpoints on various topics. What happened to challenging our thoughts? Not just in terms of social discussion, but even in freaking science. Dr. Mishi Okaku, a brilliant theoretical physicist, recently appeared on Tim Ferriss' podcast and said, in science, truth comes out from incorrect debate of untruth, meaning we need to welcome the debate of adverse positions in order to challenge our thought processes, in order to fully discover what is truth. I'm currently reading Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, an autobiography about the beginnings and humorous events of Dr. Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winning physicist. In the chapter Monster Minds, he recounts a time as a young researcher when he was tasked with giving a lecture. The topic was of great interest to many, many people, including some of the most brilliant minds in math and science to have ever lived. One of which was a professor by the name of, maybe you heard of him, Albert Einstein, already world renowned for his general theory of relativity. The topic Feynman discussed was filled with some questions, but Dr. Feynman spoke of Professor Einstein's willingness to hear a position that was adverse to his own. And that was because Einstein, and I quote, appreciated that things might be different from what his theory stated. He was very tolerant of other ideas. It's almost unfathomable nowadays to hear that a man as brilliant as Einstein could exercise such humility. In law school, you can't escape the discussion of polarizing topics, most of which are in constitutional law where you're discussing controversial topics in cases like Roe v. Wade. I cannot say enough how much I appreciated my constitutional law professor, Joel Goldstein, whose views were at times very different than my own. However, he constantly, when discussing judicial outcomes, would ask and challenge the students, although you may not agree with the judgment, do you understand where and how they arrived at it? And I've taken that thought and adapted it to just about every aspect of my life. Just because I don't agree with something or someone, am I able to empathize and understand in some way to know where they're coming from? And if not, how can I learn and understand more to be better educated for a further discussion? I'm 32 years old now, but when I was younger, I was very stubborn, and I'm sure many people would say I still am to a certain degree, but I continue to challenge myself every day to be more open to hearing opposing ideas, even changing my mind in some regards after further education and understanding of certain facts. And that actually raises another important necessity when you're having a discussion. There's a quote from the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that states, most people do not listen with the intent to understand, they listen with the intent to reply. Are you someone that has a discussion and listens to comprehend what the other person is saying, or are you just sitting there and you just can't wait to speak? I used to be the latter, and I work very, very hard at becoming the former. So when it comes to how we act nowadays, people just jump at the chance to speak and engage. Social media engagement is heavily fueled by negative reactions. Anger drives people into action more than any one of our other emotions, and it's apparent when it drives our modern news cycles. A prime example was ESPN's Instagram post for the NFL playoffs, where they featured the eliminated team in a carousel over the team that advanced to drive that angry engagement. It's so transparent and disgusting. A company like ESPN, too, that's owned by Disney, which I think is supposed to be the happiest place on earth, right? And out of all this ridiculousness, independent content creators have been born, giving rise to a genuine and open platform for everyone. Unedited and long-form interviews with guys like Elon Musk, Jacko Willink, Jordan Peterson, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Rhonda Patrick, and just countless others that I could have only dreamed of listening to when I was younger. And you know what the best part of that is well, that's different from news media outlets? We get to hear things straight from the source. Unedited, no clickbait sound bites or anonymous sources. That's always a questionable one. And if someone has a position they need to speak on, we get to hear them out. Now, there are some dangers in this wild west of education, which is why it's important to listen, understand, and then verify. Hell, you should even be doing that with the mainstream news. They certainly make mistakes. Newspapers constantly are printing retractions that only a very, very tiny percentage of their audience actually reads. Everyone makes mistakes and wrong decisions, even the health professionals at the top. But we'll never know that if we're constantly stuck with hearing only a single narrative. Never ever in science or health or law or anything is there a single approach to something. Yet that has somehow become the case? Absolutely not. I'm still waiting for the news to put out a focus on the 18 million people that die every year from cardiovascular disease and push some sort of movement to people to eat healthier and exercise. 
Does anyone think that's ever going to happen? Or are we just too caught up in our feelings? Joe Rogan's podcast is not dangerous. Having a single narrative is dangerous. I disagree or question a lot of the things that have been said on that podcast. Sometimes after researching, I'm right. Sometimes I'm wrong. But I've infinitely benefited by the amount of subject matter experts that have been on that podcast than I've been harmed if I've been harmed at all, which I don't think I have. Numerous times in human history has someone spoken against the accepted accepted ideas of the general populace and been exiled or criticized for what they stated only for us to later learn they were correct. Countless times, actually, even on Rogan's podcast with the pandemic, where ideas discussed early on that have been labeled dangerous and misinformation that are currently revisited now as potential truths. Those who've attacked his platform and others like it, I'd bet have listened to very little, if any, at all. Some people don't like their thoughts process challenge, and I don't want to live in a world where I'm not constantly evolving. I want what I put out there to be living and constantly seek and challenge the way I do things. I love engaging the comments, either good or bad, and ensuring that the information I put out there is correct. Keep me accountable. I also love having discussions with people more than anything else I do on my channel, which is why I did start my podcast. I always want to be the dumbest person in the room and listen and learn. And if that sounds good to you, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for listening.